Hey guys, Rogue Nation here with you, and today we have a story out of Boise, Idaho. And a uh, gentleman was unlawfully arrested, and charges dropped, and he's suing. It's the same old story, you know, but this guy's not an auditor. He's just a citizen. He saw some issues going on. He, you know, he went out and uh, decided to record. And, and I want to illustrate that this is the reason that we do what we do right this is part of the reason that we do what we do so that when the time comes when the time comes and a citizen feels the need to to record an interaction that they don't get arrested right that they don't have to go to jail because we have already hopefully educated uh, these officers and and you know the people involved um, unfortunately there's not a lot of uh, auditing going on in Idaho uh, so um, while there is an auditor here and there on the eastern side of Washington State and maybe even in Idaho itself the checks are few and far in between which leaves a lot of room for people to forget and leaves a lot of room for more idiots to be hired that don't know in the first place so we're going to go ahead and watch through this video, and um, I'm going to make some comments here and there, but I'll, I'll try to keep it short. But this is a news broadcast, so they they are known to copyright strike if you don't fair use them. So um, let's get into it, guys. He recorded two Boise police officers in a downtown parking garage on his phone and wound up under arrest. His charges were later dropped. But a year later, Ty Warenka, who's known to Boise police for his activism and for his capturing of law enforcement on camera, is now suing those officers and the city of Boise in U.S. District Court. His lawsuit, filed Monday, claims the officers violated his civil rights. Here's investigative reporter Morgan Romero. Around 3 a.m. on June 11th, 2022, <laughs> Boise Police body camera video shows officers arresting Ty Waranka in a parking garage on Capitol in Maine. So what are you, what are you arresting me for? They claimed he obstructed Corporal Denny Carter from doing his job. Waranka was charged with resisting and obstructing and booked into jail. What was I obstructing? My investigation. How is I obstructing you, your investigation? Are you trying to block my view? Block your view from what? My Mr. face? Mama? I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Carter and another officer, Avery Westendorf, were there to respond to a car accident at the pay station. Waranka was leaving work and driving out of the garage at the time. A parking garage employee asked him to move along. So he left, walked back in, and got out his phone. That's something I do all the time. Anytime I see something strange with police, like I'll take stop and take the time if I have it to just record it and just see what's happening. And if the people need the footage, I'll give it to them. The employee again. Let me just say, God bless this man, right? Because not a lot of citizens will take the time to, to make sure that other citizens are okay, right? Most of them will just go on their way and, um, you know, keep to themselves and, you know, um, obviously back the blue, you know. Obviously, it, there's cops there, so the situation's handled. There's nothing that's going to get out of control, you know, because... These guys love us and, you know, they care for us and they just want to come behind and, you know, wipe our little tushies for us and, you know, you know, dab our little corners of our lips because they love us so. So we don't ever have to watch these guys. They, they don't ever do anything wrong. Right. But, yeah, God bless this man for doing what he's doing. Um, he's not. It says he has some activism, but it, it sounds like to me that he just, in, you know, when he sees something, he takes out his camera and he records. Um, and that, that is activism, but it, he's not like a full-time auditor or cop watcher, right? He's not out there actively every night looking to see, to make sure, but it's more of a, you know, if he sees it type of deal, he'll, he'll come out and, and do what's needed. Um, so God bless him and God bless anybody that's out there doing that. All right, let's go on. Told him to leave. It's private property. Here, you can see Waranka walking away, but as Officer Westendorf's body camera and Waranka's cell phone video show, the situation escalated. 
I'm trying to leave. What do you think I'm doing? You just if stop you me. Interfere, let me make this clear. I want to make it super clear. So, so here, tell me what. Tell me what. No, I'm just going to interfere anyway. Take that out of my Oh, okay. Whoa. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. When I reached down to grab it, he like shoved me in the neck and grabbed my arm and pushed me up against the wall and started putting cuffs on me and told me I was under arrest for obstruction. This is what led Warenka and his attorney, Jonathan Baldoff, to... Let's wait for a second before we uh, get into the lawsuit here. But I want to make something clear, and, and I'm sure you guys could see it, but he was walking out. The officer approached him and was asking him, you know, he wanted to tell him, you know, about obstruction. And and the guy, you know, puts his camera up to, to get a better view of the gentleman. And uh, the cop slaps the phone out of his hand. This this cop is definitely out of control. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, seeing the results of this uh, lawsuit. You know, and again, it... it a lot of times it can go either way. There's a lot of wiggle room once you get in the court about arguable, reasonable suspicion, you know, and just a whole bunch of tricks and turns that they use to not be accountable. So, uh, but we'll keep an eye on this and uh, we'll let you guys know what the outcome of this case is. File a lawsuit in federal court against the city of Boise and the two officers claiming they unlawfully arrested Warenka and violated his civil rights. This complaint says officers arrested and searched him without probable cause, used excessive and unreasonable force during the arrest, and caused him serious physical injuries. People a lot of times say, this, this isn't Boise, this doesn't happen here or whatever. It's like, well, I think this case is a prime example of one of many that this sort of stuff does happen here. His suit also claims BPD and the city attorney's office have a pattern of acting indifferently to the constitutional rights of Boiseans and people visiting. Why did you decide to file a federal lawsuit? Um, I'm really interested in seeing some actual accountability. It seems like that's something that's lacking within the Boise Police Department and like Boise generally with any of our public officials. And at any point in time, they could have stepped in and said no. Don't do that, but you know, it had to take me hiring an attorney and going through all the steps in order to try to actually clear my name. Like I have nightmares about the situation and like about other police. And I think overall, like the city also suffered too and everybody else because how are you, how is anybody supposed to have faith in police when they see something like this? Like it's kind of an abject failure, I think, of the system at hand. Ty, you have the right to remain silent. So I would crazy. request that you do so. One might say in watching this story and reading it on social media, well, did he show up to the situation to agitate it? Did he get in the officer's face to then escalate the situation himself? What would you say to that? I think that's a great question. And then if you look at the footage, you'll see that that's not what happened at all. He actually approached me. Um, I wasn't saying anything to him at the time. I was just filming the situation as I was walking away. In this federal lawsuit, Warenka is asking for a million dollars and wants the case to go before a jury. Warenka's charges were dismissed in October. The city saying although there was probable cause to bring the case, there has been a, quote, change in the complexion of the state's case and it can no longer prove a matter beyond a reasonable doubt. Warenka... <laughs> I... I... Listen, we dismissed the case, but we but we had a reason to bring it, but we dismissed it because all of a sudden, um, you know, things have changed and uh, we can't prove beyond a reasonable doubt. You think? <laughs> do, do, do you think? I mean, nothing has changed, all right? Nothing has changed. If I would have saw that, if I was a DA, I would have saw that case. They brought it to me the next day the guy's arrested. I'd be like, um, you walked up to him. You got in his face. Uh, he was not obstructing anything. I don't understand. It, it kills me every day to see these videos like this. Um, it, it just kills me. Um, you know, when, when is enough enough? When is enough stupid enough stupid? When It's easy to train these guys, right? I mean, you're not talking rocket science. It's not. It's, it's so not rocket science. Train them.
or we'll we'll come through and we'll train them for you and you'll pay money and you know you might lose your job I mean even if the police departments ain't training you fools out there and I know there's cops watching this I know cops watch my channel I know the prosecutors and judges and everybody watches the channel all right if you guys ain't training them police officers I'm talking to you train yourself right thirst for the knowledge you understand what I'm saying like it, when I get a job I want to be the best person I can in that job right because I only get jobs that I like to do okay I don't get jobs that I hate doing right because that's just misery right I get jobs that I like to do that I enjoy doing and if I enjoy doing the job I want to be the best at that job that I can be and in order to do that I have to understand what the job's about what it entails what it encompasses how am I supposed to act you know so for example I was a bartender I wanted to learn as many drinks as I could I wanted to learn you know the inner workings of the bar all that stuff but I also need to know how to interact with customers, right? Because if you think cops interact with assholes, try being a bartender at a, at a fast-paced bar for a while and see what how, how much you think officers deal with bullshit and how much you deal with bullshit, right? Because there's no one giving you any more bullshit than a person that's drunk or on the edge of being drunk. You know what I mean? So, this is just... Another one in the books for us, guys, right? This, this is going to keep playing out. We're going to keep trying to educate them. Uh, and hopefully there will be some consensus. Now, there, there is good signs. I don't want to say, like, this is hopeless or something like this. There, there is good signs. I just posted on my community page the other day. Um, I shared a video of a gentleman, uh, Texas Christopher. And... Um, together I think mine and his videos I got like 60,000 he got like 20,000 views so about 80,000 views on the video but it was enough for the the new chief of police to see that this officer's behavior and he ended up firing him he, sus he suspended him indefinitely pretty much fired him he's no longer there with the department Texas City Texas um, again the the links in my community tab you can read the story there um, so I mean People are realizing the, the, you know, if nothing else, the PR look, right? The public relations look. We can't look like we're actual thugs, you know what I mean? So, um, they're at least trying to clean it up in that aspect. Um, now, if only they would, you know, regulate some time in the law library. I don't, I don't understand. See, because the Chiefs of Police, the International Association of the Chiefs of Police, they put out a bulletin about recording in public. And it's it's a correct bulletin. It says they can record anywhere that they're legally allowed to be. So the International Association of Police Chiefs know what our rights are. Why doesn't anybody below police chiefs? And, and again, that's not all police chiefs, right? Some of them don't know, but it, it's not it's not hard. It's not a hard concept to grasp. Uh, these aren't hard legal theories that you need to be, you know, the Supreme Court justice to understand. So, you know, and and again, if it's your job, try to do the best job you can, and you can't enforce the law. If you don't know the law, I mean, that's common sense. And, and trust me, I, I realize that that the public school system doesn't teach us how to think and doesn't teach us common sense and critical thinking and doesn't teach us any of that. So I understand. That's why I'm saying it's, on, it's upon us to, to thirst for that knowledge, right? And, and, and not just cops. I mean... We interact with the law in our lives every day. There shouldn't be anybody in the United States that isn't learning law at some point or another in their life, right? 
I mean, it's something that I don't think could ever be mastered uh, because of the vastness of it. Um, but, you know, we should all be learning how we interact together, how the law sees our interactions together. And trust me, it's only going to bring satisfaction to your life, right? It's only going to bring a positive thing in your life. If, again, this is, this is always the if, if you're not using confirmation bias in your, your research and your learning, right? There's a lot of people out there that are learning the law. You'll see them on the troll channels. You know, they're out there reading cases and reading statutes and stuff like that. And, and, and they're getting it all wrong, right? And the reason they're getting it all wrong is because they have preconceived notions about, you know, what already is true, right? So when you go into a topic or a subject with preconceived notions on, on you know, what is already, you know, like the, reading the Miranda rights or, you know, whatever else it is, uh, you know, if I, if I go into learning law thinking that it's illegal to record in government buildings, then obviously the only information and research I'm doing is something that's going to back up my view. That's just the way the brain works. So, you know, we should all be learning law and we should be learning it the right way, which is free from what we think we know, right? Just taking it as it is and looking at it as it is and then trying to apply some common sense to it. Um, but all right, guys, I rambled long enough. Um, I'll get out of here and I'll see you guys again. Nothing more than feeling. 